Meanwhile, I want to introduce Will Kane, host of co-host of Fox and Friends on the weekend. Uh, and Will, we're going to just pause here to see if this is in English. Sometimes we have to find out. Let's watch and listen together. And thanks for being here, Will. Well, here in Russia was sentenced to nine years in prison for nothing more than an intentional oversight. This is a miscarriage of justice. The U.S. Department of State has determined that Ms. Greiner was wrongfully detained. Nothing in today's decision changes that determination. Together with consular officers from the U.S. Embassy here in Moscow, I attended every session of Ms. Greiner's trial. We will continue to be closely engaged in this case. We will remain in frequent contact with Ms. Greiner and with her legal team. Secretary of State Blinken, President Biden's, uh, the, um, President Biden's national security team, and the entire American government remain committed to bringing Ms. Greiner home safely to her family, friends, and loved ones. And I, as Charge d'Affaires of the U.S. Embassy in Moscow, will also do my best to bring her home safely. I will continue to do everything to care for the safety and well-being of Ms. Greiner and of all U.S. citizens detained in the Russian Federation who have no higher priority. Thank you. Is it still possible to change her? I, I have no further all right, so not taking any questions there, but we got to hear uh, leadership at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow talking about, you know, staying dedicated to this case. Of course, we have Paul Whelan there, too, so there are, is at least, um, you know, something that perhaps might be a bargaining chip for both of these Americans uh, as they work on this, both on Russian soil and here at the State Department at home and potentially third parties. But that's what we were watching for, to see what would be said on, on behalf of Brittany Griner on a very grim day. Again, Will Kane is with me now. Uh, we were holding out hope that this was going to be different. Probably false hope. You know, this is an incredibly sad situation for Brittany Griner. Setting aside for one moment her culpability, just comparing punishment to the crime. Brittany Griner seems to have taken an illicit drug into Russia. And for that, she's now paying a penalty that you've highlighted today is close to 10 years in prison. That is injustice. And to see an American citizen detained as a political pawn, as I think Ari Fleischer just correctly characterized it, in Russia for larger geopolitical purposes is sad and an injustice. It's also worth pointing out for one moment, Harris, the nature of injustice. Brittany Griner and many athletes have pointed out injustice in the American justice system. And I think today is a very appropriate time to take a bigger, global, contextual look at the American justice system and realize it yes. is the exception in human history. What you're seeing in Russia is par for the course. The justice system here is the exception. Our dedication to due process does not mean we are perfect, but this would not happen in the United States of America. So let's go further with that because, you know, I, I had said to Senator Blackburn and I said this to Ari, when you are looking at a situation where athletes in particular, because there are other corporations and businesses too, but we're just going to focus on American professional athletes right now, those who go and do business in, in China and Russia, and, and they know the dangers perhaps. I don't know if they understand the optics of it all. Um, and when you look at that and you look at where we are with soft on crime policies, where criminals are running free over and over and over and over, and the juxtaposition between some of those same voices crying out for justice in America and giving the criminals room and so on and so forth, and then looking at a situation where if you get caught in another country, you don't get any room. You get a cell. And right. it could be uglier than that. And you would think it would inspire appreciation. Appreciation for the system of justice that we built over not just centuries. However imperfect it can be, as you pointed out. However imperfect. But... It's, it's, it's like criticizing the blemish on the beauty queen. We are the historical mm. beauty queen when it comes to justice, to the justice system. And it's one that arrived at not just over centuries, but over millennia. The, 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 the founding principles in the United States of America are ones that, that, that sprung from the, the Greek philosophy, from the Western Enlightenment that the founding fathers enshrined in our documents. And today, to hear, for example, LeBron James. Oh, I knew you were going there. And criticize the American comment. justice system. And then yeah. in the wake of Brittany Griner's detention, right. say, 
somehow this is an indictment on America just shows we are guided by ignorance, famous ignorance, but ignorance. And that ignorant comment, as I have said it, about, you know, maybe she wouldn't want to come home. He's since apologized for it, but I, I question whether or not he even understands what he was playing with there. Right. And I don't think he understands. Again, I don't think he understands that we are the historical anomaly. I don't think he understands the, the, the true blessing it is to live under a country, in a country where due process is enshrined as a, as a human indiv individual right. And, and today, a member of the athletics community is, is suffering in a society where that is not honored, where that is not enshrined, where that is not a value. Yeah. There's so many questions, too. Had it been somebody like a LeBron James or others, uh, would they be home already? We don't know. We, there's no way for us to know, but today is a horrendous day for Brittany Griner and her family and, and everybody who was pulling for in America uh, for her to come home. It won't be today, and it might not be soon, but there's still people working on this. All right, let's get to this. Well, I got to tell you, having Senator Manchin on this program two days ago with Kirsten Cinema still the holdout on that huge bill. Can you imagine the weight on her shoulders right now, that spending bill? She's the only holdout among Democrats. Senator Kirsten Cinema of Arizona reportedly is weighing in now on that massive Democratic spending bill. She's asking for a couple of changes to the climate, health care, and tax bill, as it's called. Politico is reporting she wants to get rid of the language, narrowing the so-called carried interest loophole, which could change the way some investment income is taxed. It would change it. The Congressional Budget Office expects the measure to reduce federal budget deficits by $102 billion over 10 years. So that's the CBO. But it also says that in the first four years, the Schumer Mansion bill, the, the tweak that got made, you know, that nobody knew was coming, will actually make the deficit go up by $22 billion. The Wall Street Journal editorial board argues those savings in the out years, as Congress likes to call the far end of the CBO budget window, are almost surely fictitious. The big picture in all of this, and, and what I had asked Senator Manchin about, and that got a little bit dicey. If this doesn't help people right away, how does it help? Because we've already spent our way by printing money into a recession under this president. So people are looking for something that's rather immediate. Penn Wharton said, doesn't address inflation, def lowering the deficit to lowering inflation through 2031. That is not immediate. And it may not happen then. But it may have, if not immediate, tangible payoff for some people. Harris, I think the mistake that we might have made in characterizing Senators Manchin and Cinema over the past couple of years is say they rep that they represented the rational wing of the Democratic Party. While much of the policy was driven by far left ideology, you talked about crime a moment ago, whether or not it's crime or climate policies, these have largely been people driven by ideology. That's not Manchin, that's not Cinema, but that doesn't make them realists, that doesn't make them moderates. What we have just seen with Senator Manchin is it makes him an old school politician, meaning he has traded, horse traded, in fact, not to moderate the ideology, but to bring something home to West Virginia, a natural gas pipeline, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. For cinema, it seems to be a reduction in the carried interest or doing away with or preserving the carried interest tax hole loophole. These are payoffs to people who support these senators, either voters, if it pays off in West Virginia, or to donors. What we're looking at with senators Manchin and Cinema is old school politics, yeah. pork, horse trading, not far left ideology. But it hurts people in those states too. It hurts particularly the lower and, and middle class voters in those states too. When things continue to be more and more expensive and what you're doing doesn't help the cause of that. Right. And I have yet to read anybody who thinks that that's actually going to happen, that there is a straight line between, because he said, oh, what about, you know, what about Moody's? Well, Moody's told us that the inflation that we have now wasn't going to happen. So I, I don't know why Manchin would think that that would be a good place to go. But say it were, it's not going to happen now. And it's going to hurt those people in those very two states that are, you know, potentially, well, he's not a holdout anymore because he's got his name on the rewrite. Yeah, as we spend more money, it's called the Inflation Reduction Act. but. 
at every look and every turn we've seen that spending more money increases inflation. It's going to increase the tax burden by all economists' accounts. It's going to increase the tax burden on the middle class citizen. Those that has anybody Joe Biden told you not to impact that that raising taxes has anybody argued with you, Will Cain, in favor of raising taxes in the middle of where we stand at 9.1 percent that we haven't seen since 1981? No, no one has argued that is a a successful step for the economy. So they want to be the unicorn where this is going to work? Except, again, what I will say is what Manchin and Cinema are doing is paying off some of their constituents, some of their supporters. It's horse trading. Wow. That feels especially dirty right now because people are hurting. Yeah. Yeah, we'll move on. President Biden is finding himself underwater in even the strongest of Democratic states, New York, a state he won by nearly two million votes. For instance, a new poll of likely New York voters gave President Biden a failing grade with 47 percent approval, 51 percent disapproval. Biden is down by 22 points among independents, for example. 18 points among suburban voters, 18 points among Latinos. Those are key voting blocks for Biden and the Democratic Party, so they say. I don't know if they've worked hard enough to try to keep people, but we'll see. All of this comes as two top New York Democrats have joined a growing list of Democrats distancing themselves from the commander in chief. Just take a peek. I don't believe he's running for re-election. Too early to say it doesn't serve the purpose of the Democratic Party to, to deal with that until after the midterms. All right, so you caught that lady on the left, right? That's Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Well, I don't know if it was an egg timer that went off or what, but do you know she publicly apologized for what she <laughs> said? <laughs> Watch. Mr. President, I apologize. I want you to run. I happen to think you won't be running. But when you run, or if you run, I will be there 100%. You have deserved it. You are a great president. And thank you for everything you've done for my state and all the states and all the cities in America. What was that? <laughs> I don't know what that was. Why was she looking down as well? Was she watching <laughs> herself in the monitor? That was fascinating. That was false. She was honest in the first answer in that debate. Joe Biden is done. He's done. It's not going to happen. It's a matter of time, I imagine, before we hear the announcement that he won't be running for re-election in 2024. You think? Yes. Yes. Undoubtedly. That would lame duck him in such a way that he could grow feathers. Well, he's going to be lame ducked anyway because he's going to be primaried. He's going to have, he's going to have Democrats running That's against true. him. That's going to ramp up right after the midterms. And it's going to be obvious to everyone that Joe Biden it cannot. So where is Kamala Harris? The nominee. Like usually when somebody <laughs> is, usually when somebody is falling down or having difficulty. Yeah. If you're not going to help pick them up, you're on the other side of the room going, why don't you pick me? I'm better. Where is she? Well, the, the, that's an interesting question. It's why she hasn't yet, yet forward herself in that position that you described. Like, hey, what about me? Which we all know will also be a resounding no. Which, that will actually be fascinating, because the Democratic Party will then have to uh, come to grips with its own identity politics. Can you distance yourself from Kamala Harris? She was picked for identity politics reasons. But we all know, oh, Gavin Newsom, Michelle Obama, I don't know. Not Joe Biden. Wow. All right. Carolyn Maloney, I wonder what her dinner conversation will be like this evening. <laughs> Good to see you. You too. Will Cain, thank you so much, always. Hey, it's Will Cain. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Cain podcast for full episodes right now.